chose to become a veterinarian fairly late in life. Precedent to going to veterinary college, she was a, a successful artist, professionally, commercially. Um, and prior to, prior, prior to her art career, she was a Harvard-trained theologian. Mm -hmm. And um, she is a very, very gifted individual. Um, she excels at really everything she does. Um, you can talk with her on a multitude of, of different topics, and she's knowledgeable in all of them. And she has a, a wonderful ability to communicate and to convey her uh, her story effectively and to uh, to marry that with an ability to be thoughtful and considerate and healing in her manner with animals is, is quite a talent. And I'll tell you something else about Dr. Stephanie that probably Jackie doesn't even know. She also um, is knowledgeable in an area of veterinary medicine that I'm not knowledgeable in at, at all. Um, she, she works on uh, Arachnids, which are spiders, oh, wow. and um, spiders. she she's developing actually a very small but a, a little clientele of uh, of um, what are the hairy big hairy things? Tarantulas. Yes. Yeah. So did you know that, Jackie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not going to get a tarantula now, are you? No, we've had lots of conversations. But uh, she she's a, a gifted gifted. I notice when I'm sitting in the office that you have a lot of uh, pet smart um, hamsters and mm -hmm. rats and stuff that go to your office as yeah, well. Yeah, it's actually Petco. Right. Petco, oh, Petco yeah. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, this, the, we as a society have, um, have changed dramatically uh, in terms of our, our ethic of our <coughs> compassionate care for animals. And, Years ago, to be a, an animal for sale in a pet store was, on some levels, a, a death sentence. Um, but there are very strict regulations that pertain to the handling and care of animals that are being put up for sale. And uh, one of those, or hamsters, mm -hmm. fall into that same category. And so when there are sick hamsters, they're brought to our office, and there are two Petco stores that uh, that use our services, and um, it's really up to us to say this one is beyond help and it's suffering and should be put down. But credit to them, they they uh, step up to the plate and they provide the care that they. I thought that was interesting. I thought it was wonderful that they do that. Yeah. Frequently, those animals are in crowded environments prior to arriving at a pet store, and they're under a, a significant amount of crowding and stress, as would would people or any other living creature that's concentrated and disrupted and shuttled around. So they get vulnerable too. I yeah. have a cat that we've had for 14 years, mm -hmm. but. Um, We've had three dogs that are fairly new, mm -hmm. and I have a Bichon that is very new, and he really wants to play with the cat, mm -hmm. and the cat doesn't want anything to do with him. But can he put the cat under such stress that she throws up? Because the other day, she, um, look, look at it from the cat's point of view. Well, I yeah. to, well, you know, the the um, we don't we there are. Informal names for, for pets. A male dog is a stud. Mm -hmm. Female dog is a bitch. A female cat is a queen. And, a, and a, an intact male cat is a king. So here you have a, this royal... And you know, the, the, the names the names have their, their... There's a nickel's worth of truth in each one of them. Right. And the... Um, the, the Cat, it's, it's world was its oyster, and then here this four-legged dog comes into its life and makes its life miserable. Right. So I can see where they get their nose out of joint. Right. Now, oftentimes they'll sort it out. Right. It's rare that they don't. This has been going on though for now, I think, uh, five months. Yeah. But 
But the other two dogs never really bothered with the cat. But this puppy is just unbelievable. <laughs> and I think the cat gets really uptight. She's even lost her bowels and everything. So. Does she have an escape route in her own personal space? She goes down cellar. <laughs> we have the door open all the time for her. Sometimes with, with cats, it's, uh, it's helpful to give them a vertical well, yeah, she area. They talk about... Um, she gets up on my desk. Vertical space for right. cats. And my husband's desk. And a, a perching place for right. her might be uh, right. beneficial. In in my own home, my wife and I have have one room in the house that is off limits to our dogs. And of course, it's not off limits to the cat. But um, that is the sanctuary for the cat. And it's because uh, when we brought that special needs dog in, Gracie, Oh, she was all curious about the cat. And we just don't know. We don't really like to trust her alone in the house yeah. with the cat. So when we, when the house is empty, we keep her in a crate for fear that she might try and kill the cat because she's big. Um, but uh, the cat has its escape room, and that's, mm -hmm. that's helpful in, that, in those situations. You have three dogs. You're ambitious. Well, one is a shared dog. Okay. And I don't have it too much anymore. Okay. So it goes from two daughters, it goes between two daughters and my son. So um, I only have two now. I, I really, I would, would speak um, uh, quite strongly and in favor of pet sharing as a, as a concept to think about. There are so many advantages. When you, when you have occasion to do some mm -hmm. traveling, you have this network of people who have some collective responsibility for the pet. You have no need for a boarding facility. And a pet that's used to going to several different homes and is at home in several different homes will find that process to be quite seamless. Another thing that is, is new uh, in recent years as opposed to when we all were, were younger is the, the concept of crating a dog when you're not home. Um, dogs really like the structure and the, um, I guess I would call it the structure of um, knowing what the rules are and what the boundaries are when there is not a leader in place. One of the beautiful things about that Dog Whisperer program is that he, he articulates so well the need for strong leadership with dogs. Because dogs are followers by nature, and they are at their happiest when they know what the rules are, what the structure is, and they just want to play by those rules. When, uh, when uh, we all leave the home for the day or whatever, and a, a dog is fairly new to a, an environment, they really need that structure, and they really do best by being in a crate. And years ago, there wasn't so much of a need for that when we lived in a, a more rural environment. Well, if we're not home, the dog can be outside and it can hang out in the backyard and find its own way there. But we don't quite live in that simple a world and that uh, uh, carefree a, a world anymore, unfortunately. I would argue unfortunately. Yes? My daughter has a couple dogs. I'm not interested in having a dog uh -huh. <laughs> because when I travel. Mm -hmm. uh, but at any rate, um, she just recently learned, of course, she has the cages, which she puts them in. Yeah. And um, But then she just thought it might be helpful to them just to close them in a room. And then the dog would do all kinds of damage. And then yeah. she had a friend who told her that that is not a good idea. It's better to put them in the cage yeah. because they're comfortable. If they're in a room, closed in a room, it's that is um, uh, really much more upsetting to them and it'll do all kinds of damage. Yeah. There's no. And I, she just was so surprised yeah. about that. She thought, well, they'd have a place to move around, but they were happier. That's true. Okay. It, has to, it has to do with the, um, the right <coughs> fit. And a, the, the beauty of a crate or a small cage is that it has a sense of closure and it has a sense of uh, coziness, if you will. And um, frequently, we, I'll use the analogy that the, the people are kings of the castle in their home, 
Your home is your castle. You're king of the castle. Well, the dog can be king of the crate. <laughs> you can put a dog in a small crate and they, they can reign, in that, reign supreme in that little crate and have their chew bone and their blanket and have their sense of security. And uh, again, it has to do, it speaks, with, speaks to structure and it speaks to order and um, boundaries and, and limitations. And these are things that dogs uh, go for. Again, I'm going to use my own example of my own two dogs, but um, in, in my home, it is very much like a farm, even though I, I, uh, I live next to an animal hospital, but it's very much like living on a farm, and there is a rhythm to it, that every day at between 6.30 and quarter of 7, the staff starts arriving, and um, my dogs are tuned into this. Uh, every night before I go to bed, usually around anywhere from 10.30 to midnight, I walk through the hospital. And it's, it's like walking through a barn. But my dogs want to be part of this. And they're not comfortable going to bed until we've done the walk through the hospital. They live for it. But uh, if, if I were to, to forget, or I know there's not, not an animal to be checked there, and I may want to be... A little lazy, they'll remind me they've got to go walk through the hospital. So they, they really like that structure. And uh, it speaks to the, I think, to the, the better aspects of, of our own life. We, we need structure too. We all need to get up every day and we need to exercise and, and go through our routine. But animals are more primal and they're, they're tied into that structure. I have a question. Yes. Um, I have a dog, a very large Weimaraner, uh -huh. that has total separation anxiety yes. with me. Mm -hmm. Only me. Um, I couldn't crate him. He would drool the whole entire time. Yeah. He would flip out. I have tried everything in the world to break the dog of this. Mm -hmm. Any suggestions? I, I have to leave. When I leave him, I have to leave him out. He has to. I have to put TVs on. He likes certain channels. There's some <laughs> dogs that are like that, and that's the that's the that's the nature of that dog. And if it's working that way, is he destructive? When Not anymore. Him? Only if he's mad at me. If, if he's mad, he, you know, he'll get into something. But I'm smart. I lock up all my stuff. It's the girls that don't lock up their stuff. But he used to be destructive. I mean, I know I've read that they can chew their way out of a closet. Yeah, they can. That, but see, that's really speaking to a larger issue, and that's the social nature of a dog and yep. dogs being followers. And they are not comfortable when left without that leadership. 